Hello, hello. All right, so this is our final lesson of the atomic theory, and then next class, next lesson, whatever, that one is going to be a test. All right, so this one should be shorter. Thank you for your grace when it comes to some of the lessons that are longer, like longer videos and everything. Thank you for your grace for that. Uh, so let's get started here. You are going to be opening up your unit six student notes. So you should be having it where you're doing a search in your Google Drive or in your uh, Google Docs, either one will work. And you're looking for the Google Doc that you would have opened on Wednesday, May 20th. So make sure you open that up. You should have it saved and then you're just continuing with it. So after today, you will be sending me your document. So keep that in mind. This is the final bit that I'm gonna ask you to do in this unit. There's definitely gonna be some stuff in here that you're not going to be asked to do because we've run out of time. So with that being said, today's the last lesson. Finish off your notes, send me your document when you're done. That way I can mark it for being done, being completed. Uh, and you are gonna be starting on like, for me, this is page 19. It could be something like page 18 or something like, just depending on if you change the font size or spacing or whatever it might be but I'm on page 19, you'll be around there, but you're starting with chemical formula, all right? So that is where you're starting. And also here, you can have it where you click on this and this will give you the uh, Google Slides. So we are looking at chemical formulas and we're knowing, we're looking at how with elements, they have their own unique chemical formula. They can combine those symbols into a chemical formula for things like water. And what happens is, something like this when you see this little number here this refers to the element that it comes directly after so that means for h2o this means it has two hydrogen atoms and it only has one oxygen atom so that number two does not refer to the o it actually refers to the hydrogen so just keep that in mind. So like over here, we have CO2. If you look at that one, you notice that this little two here, this shows up directly after the oxygen. So it only refers to the one that it's directly after. That means oxygen, there's two of them. But for carbon, guess what? There is only going to be one carbon in that chemical formula. So just keep in mind the little two or whatever number it might be, it only refers to the letter that it comes directly after, the one that it's like touching. So not the one that comes before. Let's take a look here. In H2O, that two did not refer to the oxygen. It only referred to the hydrogen. So I just wanted to make that really clear because otherwise it's going to get really confusing for you as you continue on with chemistry in your high school career, that uh, if you're thinking that that two can refer to what it comes before, that's gonna mess you up. Whereas here, this is referring to what, what, what it directly comes after. And you will be needing to know this for the test coming up because you are going to be looking at some chemical formulas and you are going to have to tell me what it is that is part of it. So you would have to tell me for something like H2O, you would tell me two hydrogen and one oxygen atom. All right, so that would be your answer. Or for CO2, you'd be telling me one carbon and two oxygen atoms. So keep that in mind that you need to know what that little two or three or whatever it might be stands for. The subscript, you have to see what that stands or what that relates to. It always relates to the letter that it comes directly after, all right? Please ask me if you have any questions on that one because there's gonna be a few questions about this on the uh, test and I wanna make sure you know what to do with that. Okay, now moving on. So we have our chemical bonds. Now, the cool thing is, is that with things like, let's say water, like there's uniformity within, within a compound. So in this case, we're looking at water molecules and every single one is going to be exactly the same. There's always going to be two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, and it's going to be bonded in a fixed ratio. So always a two to one ratio, always. That's never gonna change to three to one or two to two. As soon as you do that, and we're gonna look at that later in the lesson, as soon as, let's say, if you were to add in an extra oxygen atom, it completely changes the chemical formula. It makes it so that it becomes a completely different compound. So what happens is that the atoms in the molecule are held together by a special force that we call a chemical bond, all right? So the chemical bonds that are happening between these atoms here. 
Now, there is the possibility of being able to separate the atoms within a chemical compound. So let's say if you had two water molecules, what would happen is if you had enough energy to be able to break those bonds, and it had to be a fair bit of energy, but if you had enough energy to break those bonds, the atoms would separate. And then what would happen is, you know, theory, theoretically you'd have the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms, but what's, what's neat is that if you, let's say you had two water molecules, you had enough energy to break those bonds, then what would happen is automatically, there'd be two hydrogen atoms, um, and then we'd also have two oxygen atoms that we bonded together. So H2 and O2, diatomic molecules here. Remember, diatomic means two, triatomic means three, the same type of element. You'll actually see a video here. Uh, it's later on in your book, but it's called The Electrolysis of Copper Chloride Solutions. Pretty cool as far as it's like just a short little video and it shows how you can have the opportunity to be able to uh, break apart the solution of copper chloride and see how all of a sudden, if you have enough energy doing it, then at the end of the experiment, you'll see how the copper actually started to be separated from the chloride and to stick to one of the, um, the sticks that they had in the solution. It's pretty neat. So I definitely encourage you to check that one out. That's a little further down in your uh, notes here. So actually, let me just, I completely forgot to look at this here. <laughs> So what we're looking at is that when it comes to a compound, so we're having it where it's made up of more than just one type of atom, and you usually are going to have two or more different elements. So we're going to look at some other uh, aspects of a compound. So a compound is going to have the elements are not just physically mixed but chemically bonded together at the atomic level. So this is going to be different than let's say adding sugar to your tea. That's going to have it where it dissolves and all that good stuff but here we're having it where it's not just mixed, it's having it where it's literally bonding together and forming a new um, type of compound there. We also have it where formula Oops. show different elements so you have different elements within the formula there and, and the formula is meant to have it we're like taking a look here you're looking to see the different elements that are um, within that formula there and formula usually <laughs> Formula usually has uh, subscripts showing ratios. These subscripts, I briefly mentioned it before, that these little numbers. So the little numbers, whether it's a 2, a 12, a 15, whatever, those little numbers are subscripts, and that shows how many of those particular atoms there are. By the way, fun fact, you'll notice that I have formula and formulae and formula. Um, same thing. What it is is usually for a for the plural of formula. They have it where it can be either formulae, where you have E at the end, or it can be formulas like this. Either one is correct. Uh, but yeah, I thought someone would probably end up noticing the formulae versus formula. So anyways, just brief little mention there as far as you're going to end up having it where um, with your compounds, you're looking at two or more different elements within there. So then if that's the case, I want you to take a look here and I want you to tell me if it is an element or if it's a compound. So here I'm looking at H2O. So I am seeing two or more different elements. I'm also seeing the subscripts. So that means that this is a compound. Whereas here, yes, I definitely do see the subscripts, that is true, but I am only seeing one type of element. So it's only one type of element, with that being the case, this is an element. It's a diatomic element because it has two. And now I want you to fix, or not, well, not really fix, I want you to answer these last four here. I want you to tell me if it is a compound, or if it's an element. That's what I'll be looking for when you send me your completed notes is if you had it where you told me it was a compound or an element, 
then here we've got some notes to fill and we're going to take a look now see how i was saying how when it comes to compounds and the chemical bonds that they share they're going to be in fixed ratios within those compounds and with that being the case it's never going to vary unless you do some sort of um, like if you're if you're changing the uh, chemical formula because look at h2o you have water it's neutral it's not going to hurt you or anything like that whereas here you just add one extra oxygen molecule per or one extra um, oxygen atom per um, ratio there and you're going to see that you end up with a completely different compound it's no longer water it's actually hydrogen peroxide so if you're looking at the official name here that is going to be dihy whoopsies dihydrogen dioxide that di stands for two i had a feeling i spelled that wrong <laughs> this one it's simply going to be dihydrogen monoxide so i'm going to just quickly go over the meaning of that <laughs> it sure helps if i spell this right <laughs> dihydrogen monoxide so here you'll see the di means two and then again you have two because it's two oxygen two hydrogen here you only have one oxygen that's why it's mono one but you still have two hydrogen molecules or atoms. So then that means you've got dihydrogen. Now here we have the common name of hydrogen peroxide. This one common name is water. And the boiling point of, of hydrogen peroxide is 150 degrees Celsius. Whereas for water, the boiling point is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. Now, a couple other things to keep in mind is that melting point is going to be minus 0 0.43 degrees Celsius. For me, I'm just going to add this over here so it looks prettier <laughs> or it looks more organized. And then for water, it has a melting point of zero degrees Celsius. And keeping in mind with that, like think about how you were looking at latent temperature in the um, previous unit and how that is where, it, when it's at a certain temperature, that's when it starts to be melting or um, having it where it's turning into steam. And so zero degrees is where if a solid is brought to zero degrees and then, and then it just stays around there, it's gonna end up starting to thaw out. So that's the melting point. Uh, then, oh, I guess I can also put melting point here. So just see the same. Okay, then we're also gonna take a look about the fact that um, hydrogen peroxide, it can actually be highly reactive. Whereas when it comes to water, it's obviously going to be stable. Now we're going to keep going down here. So we're going to take a look at the fifth postulate, and that is how atoms are chemically combined in chemical, in chemical, in fixed ratios to form compounds. And so we're going to be taking a look at different types of bonds that they have. What I'll do is I'll stop the video here and I will start a new one. That way you don't have too long of videos. So I'll be right back.